This is how I look in a super processed video and this is what the camera captures. Now here's the thing, since I'm not that glamorous enough, also as you can see I don't have an excellent lighting setup, just one CFL. Getting from here to there, it requires a lot of post processing and maybe a couple of hours or so. So do I make the adjustments every time that I make a video? No, I have created something called LUT or LUT. Now all I have to do every time I make a video, I just have to add that LUT to that video and that's it. It applies all the adjustments that I need, all the curves and levels and everything, every adjustment that you do, everything is saved in a LUT. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to create a LUT for videos in Photoshop featuring Premiere Girl. So first I will explain how do you create a LUT and then Premiere Girl will show you how to apply those LUTs in Premiere Pro. First off, what is a LUT? Stands for look up table and guys, to be really simplistic, LUT is like an Instagram filter, that's it. However, in this case, you can create your own LUT for your kind of videos. Without going back to maths and numbers, which is really pathetic, here is the formula that you need to remember. R equals S plus L, where S is the source, the original image or the video that you're working on. Okay, LUTs also work on images, remember that. R is the result, whereas L is the LUT. Now, once you add source and the LUT, you get the result. So therefore, we can say that a LUT is nothing but a pixel modifier. You can think of LUT as guys who say, make the darks a little more bluer, make the highlights more brighter, make the brighter areas a little bit yellowish. You get the idea, right? So, without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and there are two pretty ways of getting started to create a LUT in Photoshop. Okay, so the number one way which I used to do previously is that I used to take a screenshot which you can also do from the video, open that screenshot as an image in Photoshop and create a LUT above it. Also you can save a higher quality screen capture from Premiere Pro and open it up in Photoshop. But recently Premiere Girl told me that you can also open a clip of the video in Photoshop and create a LUT above it. Guys, Photoshop is not great at handling longer video files or very heavy video files. So here's what we do. We create a small clip, maybe a 5 second clip or 2 second clip and open it up in Photoshop and create a LUT above it. So two ways, number one, taking a screenshot and number two, importing the clip, short clip of the video directly into Photoshop. So here we have our sample footage and all we are going to do, we are going to drag it and drop it into Photoshop. Now one of the other ways of importing this is going to file, open and then import. Now it opens up with a timeline. If you don't see the timeline, you can always go to windows and check, make sure the timeline is checked. So that's okay. So you can move through the timeline and look through the scene. This is a five second clip and this, the first scene is good for editing. Now once you're satisfied with the clip, uh, with the scene that you have locked in, Click, just close the timeline. This is useless right now. We can always open it up later. Now, change the background to dark red, dark gray, which I would do in this case. You can choose any background which is contrasty with the clip. Instead of playing with the sliders, the first question that you need to ask yourself is what do you want to do with the image? First, think of in terms of light. Second, think of in terms of color. Okay? Do you want your image to be contrasty? Do you want it to be brighter? Do you want it to be dimmer? Do you want it to be lighter? What do you want in terms of light? Then think in terms of color. This is a little bluish. Do you want to take away the blues? Do you want to make it more yellowish? Do you want to make it more reddish? Okay. So thinking first in terms of lighter, I want to make it a little more punchy. So here's what I would do. I would create an adjustment layer called curves. Okay. Now curves dialog box just appears. So let's zoom in quite a bit and as you can see in curves, this is the histogram. On the x-axis, this is the x-axis, we have the brightness level, okay? On the y-axis, we have the number of pixels, which means that for this brightness level, we have this many pixels. For this brightness level or darkness level, we have almost no pixels. For this kind of brightness level also, we don't have any pixels. It's very negligible, okay? So as long as you bring down the slider to this point, we are not losing any details. Watch. I'll take it, take a little bit to the side. We are not losing any details, but if you get past it, you begin to lose details in the highlights, okay? So up until 
this point it's really really safe similarly for the dark areas up until this point it's really really safe if you go past it you're going to lose details in the darker areas so set this this is okay now if you want to make anything more brighter you can make it through this you don't have to touch this right now okay now we are not losing details anymore okay we will only lose uh, lose details if we touch the roof okay that's pretty good we want to make it a little brighter so let's make it let's take it to the side let's make it a little brighter there you go it's great let's make the dark a little more darker that's okay right before after makes loads of difference just one curves adjustment layer okay now let's talk about colors we want to take away the blues from this so add another curves adjustment layer okay don't do it in the same curves adjustment layer it can mess up okay add another curves adjustment layer here's why I i'm gonna explain it to you suppose you were working with the blues and you are decreasing the blues here but you want to increase the blues in the shadows so you went ahead and tried increasing it but here's what will happen this will also get affected so you don't want that to happen so it's better to create it into a separate layer create a separate curves adjustment layer for every single action okay try to do that try to be as separate as possible now in the second curves adjustment you can always click here to open up the properties click here this opens up the properties and go to the blue channel the shortcut to which is alt or option 5 okay alt 5 for blue alt 4 for green and alt 3 for red so directly go to blue and decrease it a little bit this takes away the blues okay you need to find a balance where it doesn't get too much yellow also at the same time it's at a neutral color also at the same time it doesn't have a lot of blue in it okay so this is a good value to be in there you go so let's look at the before and after really quickly so this is the after and this is the before a lot of blues gone but it has gone a little more yellowish we might have to edit it just a little bit there you go it's great now how about adding red to the shadows create another curves adjustment layer you you could have done this in this one also but also one of the other reasons of creating a number of adjustment layer is that you can name it this is for the red shadows this is for the highlights and this is for that so you can turn off and on each curves adjustment layer and see how it looks without particular singular elements okay so let's open up the properties and open up the reds channel and let's increase the shadows from here okay and let's make it a little more you there you go it looks nice before after you can also add a little more bluish to the shadows okay and that will give it a little instagram effect now this looks pretty awesome now how about adding a highlight on the water won't it look nice yes it will so create another curves adjustment layer and we are going back to light again we can always go back and come back you get the idea right so let's increase the highlights now this increases the highlights all over the image now we don't want that we just want highlights at certain parts of the image now here's where blend if comes to rescue you can always go ahead right click on it and go to blending options and take the slider of the underlying layer from the left to the right now this is quite harsh press and hold alter option and click on it to make the transition a little more smoother there you go now we're getting this on the water now this is looking pretty awesome okay so once you're satisfied you can always click ok now it's too much you we might want to decrease the opacity there you go it looks, it's looking nice now you can add anything you want you can add uh, a very nice thing is gradient map if you apply gradient map here's what you got to do click on this drop down arrow click on the settings and choose photographic toning okay and there are a lot of presets here to apply okay so suppose you like say this one and you don't have to apply it in complete 100% opacity you can always decrease the opacity to your liking now above it you can add one more curves adjustment layer and add a little bit of more blue to the shadows there you go now that's kind of an Instagram effect right so you can turn off the red and let's see how it looks without the red so it looks without the red this way so we can dial in the opacity down so let's look at the before and after let's make a group of all of these curves adjustment layer so select the first one press and hold shift and select the last one control G this makes a group before after 
makes loads of difference. At this point, you might want to zoom in and check how the image looks. So let's zoom in and it looks pretty good. Now, I think there should be a little more brightness. You can add a brightness or even an exposure. Okay, so let's increase the exposure. Let's see how it looks with the exposure. Just a little increased. Now, it just goes off. The brighter areas, the highlights just goes off. So exposure is good. Okay, offset. It just fades up things. Okay, now it's good. We don't need to apply exposure. Let's try applying curves adjustment layer. So let's try applying curves and let's try increasing the brightness not the highlights just turn down the highlights so here we have the highlights as i said this is the brightness level so we want to turn down the highlights there you go and increase the brightness a little bit in the shadows there you go but not too much maybe something like this okay looking pretty good let's look at the before and after before after much more difference. Now, once you're satisfied with this, you might want to go to file and export and save as color lookup tables, but it will not happen. Just watch. Could not export lookup tables because this document had just no adjustment layer, but this has adjustment layers. But why does it say so? Let me show you why. So when you go to windows and when you open the timeline, here's what you will see. Let's just collapse the group. Let's make the timeline a little bigger. Let's fit it here. Now, as you can see, there are no adjustment layers above the video because it's inside the video group. These are, let's name it adjustment. It's below the video group, inside the video group. So we need to take it above the video group. So here we have the adjustment group. Pretty nice. But again, if you go to file, export and color lookup tables, it will not happen again because this document has no background. So you need to create a background again. So create a new layer and place it beneath every other layer and go to layer, new, background from layer. So now you can go to file, export and color lookup tables and there you can save the color lookup table or LUT. Okay, lookup table. Now you can save the description, sample footage is fine, copyright. Okay, now here's the thing. You have to keep the quality at medium. I suggest you medium. If you keep the quality at high, that's okay, but that's gonna take a lot of time, not just to save, but also to apply. And that can make your video a little bit slower and more time to render. Don't ever try to go all the way up to 256 unless you have a supercomputer, it will take ages to process all right so keep it at medium and make sure you have checked all the formats now premiere i think supports cube and some other formats but here's the thing it's always safe to save in all formats of lut so that no matter which software you use you always have a format for that okay click ok and save it wherever you want maybe i'll save it in desktop and maybe i'll create a new folder one, two, three, anything, it doesn't really matter. Sample footage.lut, all files, and you have to click save. And there you go. So this is the LUT that we just created. I took some more time and created this LUT for Premiere Gal. So this is the before and this is the after. Now Premiere Gal is going to show you how to exactly apply this LUT and adjust it in Premiere Pro. It's going to be a lot of fun. My job is done. Over to you Premiere Gal. And also if you are new here, make sure to give us a like and also not just subscribe. Click on that bell button so that you don't miss anything. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.